It's hard to see when surrounded by it. Take a step back. Look around. Change is everywhere now. Change builds arenas of magic and fosters new worlds of talent. It takes hospitals to the streets and the bedridden into nature. Change measures, understands, and spurs us on. It welcomes the most distant places into its presence and the most eager students into its classrooms. It fills our lights with digital power, our language with new meaning, and the separated with hope. Change lets us steer from afar and brings knowledge anywhere. Turns empty rooms into open hotels and learning into child play. Its most devoted minds reinvent hierarchies and industries. Wild ideas burst into big business and big dreams into reality. Change helps our planet by making smarter use of its greatest powers. It finds knowledge in waste and in the ingredients of nature. Steel boxes become smart carriers and machines become communicators. It joins the tracks and shields our bodies. It guards the largest of giants, the deepest of forests, and our protectors in the most dangerous surroundings. Alone, each change marks progress. Combined, they transform our world. The opportunities are everywhere now. Take them. Yes, change is happening. It's everywhere, including here in India. India has over 300 million internet users, and many amongst them are harnessing the power of the net to bring about change. Ericsson, in partnership with CNN and IBN, is launching a campaign to identify, honor, and possibly support some such individuals. We are calling it Networked India. What is the significance of networking in the global context? Well, to speak about that, I have with me Chris Houghton. He's the India region head of Ericsson. Chris, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Uh, in, to your mind, how, how would you define a network society and why is it so important today? Well, we say that's where every person in every industry uh, can, be, can be empowered through uh, connectivity. And I think that's something that's uh, very important for, uh, uh, for the whole world, uh, basically. I mean, to, to allow people to be, uh, to be connected, it allows the economy to, uh, to develop, it allows people to develop their own lives and in so many different ways. That, that backbone of connectivity for, uh, for everyone is something that we see as vitally important. And to your mind, what, what would be the essentials of a networked society? Well, I think that's why, you know, as <clears throat> we talked before, we see 50 billion uh, uh, connected uh, devices uh, in, in the future. But we see that's where, you know, <clears throat> all aspects of uh, people, places, uh, things and, uh, can be connected, uh, connected together for the benefit of society as a whole. Uh, to make things easier, to, to, uh, for example, education, health, etc. Many, many different aspects uh, of that society working together in harmony. And it's not something that we want to control, it's something where that, <clears throat> that connectivity is there and allows people to develop and, uh, and develop things be, uh, for the future in, in a, in their own, for their own needs. And do you think it can empower the average Indian out there? And if so, uh, how? Yeah, most definitely. I, I think you know, this, this, you know, smartphones are becoming cheaper. I think that's mm -hmm. one of the, the key things. That's how most people w would access the network society for us. And I think as the prices are, are falling, they will continue to fall. More and more people are getting access to those devices. And we're actually seeing that already in India, that people are, uh, you know, from maybe poorer communities, more rural communities, are having access to those. We're also seeing that across different age groups as well, that people are, you know, we've seen, I think, in the over 50s, that's quadrupled over the last few years, the, the amounts of people are actually, uh, you know, using devices and, and, and data. So we've seen 
different applications that people can use for many, many different things. It can be for entertainment, for education, mm -hmm. check on weather, crops, uh, things. So it will start small, but it will build it from there. But have you been able to fully exploit the power of mobility and connectivity? No, not yet. I have to say, not yet. I mean, I think for the people who have it, they're doing it. Uh, I think the, the key thing we've got to do is to make sure that it's available for as many people as possible. And I think that's one of the, I think as, as prices fall on, on, on devices, and we find new ways to uh, exploit spectrum, something that we're working on all the time, how to squeeze uh, more data through very small spectrum, then I think we'll have you know, access for more and more people to really get the full benefit of that. So, you know, we know that technology connects people, et cetera, et cetera. But do you see the potential of it working at the grassroots uh, grassroot level in India? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, uh, I, th I think, as I said before, I think we'll see more and more of that come out. I mean, today we have, uh, I think, only uh, you know, a very small percentage of uh, smartphones, maybe 12% in, in, in the country today. We predict by 2020 we'll see 45%. And to be honest, at the moment, I think that's probably a conservative figure. I think we'll see over 50% of smartphone uh, penetration in the country. And, of course, people will... Um, People will renew smartphones, they will be uh, spread out to, to uh, many more people on the second-hand market, so we'll see that penetration becoming bigger. So I think it will hit all elements of society. And I think there's also good things from, from this as well in terms of education, health, uh, you know, from farmers as well to, to use this technology for, for, in a, for good in a, in, a, in a way that really helps them. So I think we will see that spread through all aspects of society, definitely. Chris, it's interesting you bring that up because there is now a report that suggests that by 2020, that's in the next five years, the number of internet users in India will go up to 500 million. In rural India, the usage will be up 50%. But there's already a village that is ahead of the curve. Take a look. The village of Punsari is a confluence of contrasts. state-of-the-art technology meets simple rural living. Located 80 kilometers from Ahmedabad in the sun-scorched interiors of Gujarat, Punsari has the rare title of being India's first Wi-Fi enabled village. The technology is because of the development of infrastructure development. But with technology, every person can change a lot of things in the a third generation village leader, 31 year old Himanshu Patel, is the tech savvy Sarpanch of Punsari. In five years, he has made sure that every household in the village has a smartphone and knows how to use it best. If you have electricity, you can pay for it. If you have a booking, you can pay for Railway flight is booking, so you can pay for it. Hello, I am telling you that I am very happy. The 6,000 villagers of Punsari also have access to a sophisticated public address system of 140 speakers, which Himanshu can control from anywhere by simply dialing into his mobile phone. The 16 CCTV cameras that watch each street of the village can be accessed on any smartphone in the village through a mobile app. इस गांव के लेवल पे आने के बाद मैं मान रहा हूँ कि ये सारी चीजें फैसिलिटी शुरू हुई है। उससे साथ लोगों के दिल में एक फीलिंग आ गई है कि हम इंडिया के बेस्ट विलेज में रह रहे हैं। मेरा विजन क्लियर है कि आत्मा गांव की और फैसिलिटी शहर की। I don't want to remove the culture of the village. All the facilities, if you get 3G in the city, if you get 4G in the city, but here in 2010 there is Wi-Fi, so the village will not feel like we are using 3G or 4G. This is my vision. The village of Punsari is the first Wi-Fi enabled village in India. It is stories like these that make the Networked India campaign so significant. Chris, just speak to us about the objectives of this campaign. Why do it at all? Well, we want to show the, the, the benefits, really, uh, to people of, of how they can use this uh, connectivity to really uh, do things uh, in an innovative way for the benefits of India and, and really show some, you know, some great examples. We, we, you know, we, we're trying to sponsor some innovation with the IITs to, for them to really come up with new ideas that can be a benefit here in the country. But we also want, just want to show on a broad basis as well that how people using connectivity can really do some great things. An example I have, uh, I have from outside of India is actually in, in Bhutan, 
where we uh, connected some schools together. Now, the, in, in Timpu, in, in the, the capital there, there's a Pelko school, which is the, uh, one of the most prestigious schools. But the uh, children in uh, some of the five or six different valleys that can't actually have access to that, to that school, too far away, too much difficult terrain, they're in some uh, more local village schools. Mm -hmm. So what we did together with Bhutan Telecom was to link those schools together with a very interactive whiteboard so the teacher from Pelkill School could teach the, uh, the, the children in the other villages and get access to the actual top levels of education. And I think that's something that you can really see the benefits of a, of a network society for, for good. We're also doing those types of projects in India under the same platform, helping kids to be educated through different means of technology. So I think that's just one example. There's many, many different examples of how we can use this connectivity for in a good way. And in the Indian context, what are the key areas you think where mobility and connectivity can make a huge impact? Well, I think we've seen many, many different things that we've already seen uh, mobile banking really starting to take off uh, in this market. We, you know, there's uh, health, education, uh, as I mentioned before. I think there's many, many different opportunities uh, here for, for in India. I mean, I think one thing that people should remember is that in a smartphone today, that's the same computing power in a smartphone as there was that took Neil Armstrong to the moon and brought him back again. So people have that in their hands today. I mean, if the Americans could send Neil Armstrong to the moon in 1969, imagine what people in India can do with that same technology. Here. Chris, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks. you. Over the next few weeks, we'll be getting you amazing stories of individuals and organizations that are using networking and communication technologies to bring about change in their own unique way. How can you participate? Well, that's coming up after a very quick break. Welcome back to Ericsson Presence Networked India in partnership with CNN IBN. Now, innovation in India is often necessity-based. We end up calling it Jugaad. And some of the brightest and best innovators in our country come from where else but the IITs. Since its inception, the Indian Institute of Technology has been the perfect incubator for breeding new leaders who blend innovation with entrepreneurship and drive change in society. They give us opportunity to explore problems uh, that, that we face in our day-to-day -day lives in society and uh, come up with solutions for these problems and try to solve them on our own. The institutions are providing us infrastructure and support. Means whenever we want to develop new things, we require a lot of support from means, uh, hardware and stuff like that moral support and technical support. If you want to be a true innovator, you've got to move from having an idea to being able to execute it. To recognize and promote the spirit of innovation, Ericsson, in association with Foundation for Innovation and Technology Transfer, holds the Ericsson Innovation Awards every year. So we are Team Smartword from IIT Bombay. So this innovation called Smartword, I would like to give some background. The competition gives students from IITs an opportunity to build a community that looks into the future and addresses the unattended issues persisting in our society with the help of networking and communication technologies. Innovations are happening all over the world. So the solutions which are applicable to US or Australia, they may not be applicable to India. So the solution should be India specific. We need to actually do a study what is actually needed rather than inventing something and artificially creating a need for that. This country at this point of time need more innovations because we are faced by a lot of problems. So this kind of awards can actually motivate the youth to think more, come out of the box and do something great. The competition that started last year promotes and motivates young students to put the theories that they have learnt in classrooms to test and explore challenges and help build a better networked society. Initiatives like this only give an impetus. Uh, they are a boost to the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship in a country which is very, very young in the entire entrepreneurship life cycle. Canada today is designing D-Wave, which is a quantum computer. Those, these computers are as big as this building right now, but in 50 years, they'll be again in our watches, in our mobile phones, right? So we need to start thinking and start inv investing in those fundamental research. This is just the beginning, a very small glimpse. Uh, there's much more to India than what the world is seeing, but it stays dormant. It has to be, you know, uh, given 
more uh, opportunities to come out. The students showcased projects and ideas that they envisioned could help develop a new ecosystem which could in turn drive positive change. It's definitely benefiting the students. It's making them more capable, more, more industry ready. But most importantly, it's benefiting the country. They are they're innovation ready. Innovations are in India's DNA and the growth of networking technology has opened up infinite avenues for our innovators. Through this campaign, Networked India, we are hoping to find the best and the brightest amongst them. Participation in the Networked India campaign is easy. All you need to do is log on to www.networkedindia.com and fill in the online entry form. CNN IBN Editorial Board will review your entry based on the preset eligibility criteria described on the website. Entries chosen by this panel will be sent to an expert pre-jury panel. The pre-jury will further evaluate the entries and shortlist five finalists. There are two very, very critical things. One is innovation, creativity. It has to come up. The other thing that is equally important is the impact that innovation makes. And if those two come together, and if we are able to create something that actually impacts the masses of this country, then I think we've got the right match. The five finalists will present their innovations before a grand jury and a live audience at the grand finale of Networked India campaign, which will be held in August this year. Nominations are open from the 8th of June and will close on the 12th of July. I would appeal to all of you out there that find that inventor inside you, bring out that creative zeal. This platform is amazing, Networked India. We would urge all of you to bring out those entries where you think you can bring the right mix of innovation and impact built on fundamentals of connectivity, mobility and internet. India is changing and our innovators are leading that change. If you are one amongst them or know someone, do participate in our campaign, Networked India. Who knows your small innovation could make a huge impact. Thanks for watching. We can make an ecosystem where means multiple person can come and they can discuss their ideas and then they can build different different kind of products. Compare them to the Western world, the ideas in India they are pretty much simpler, but they have to be more robust and suited to the Indian society. This is the beauty about innovation that the more innovation happens around you, more and more people are inspired to do innovation. So it's an exponential curve. With the advent of smartphones. A lot of apps are coming every day, so this encourages people to think, you know, what else can be done. So this is, on the whole, encouraging a uh, you know environment of innovation among everyone, you know, not just the technical community. All the innovations that are happening around the world, it's helping make us more smarter world, a safer world.